Unit step function is most commonly seen first in a differential equations course, although you'd be able to understand the idea of the unit step function, at least the basics, without knowing any differential equations at all. Uh, the unit step function, it's a piecewise function, so we have to know what piecewise functions are. But the idea is it's a way of modeling nicely when something is turned off and then something becomes turned on at an instant of time. So you can see here by our piecewise function, the rule basically changes at when t or when time is equal to some value a, you can see it changes from one piece to the other. Okay, so when we're less than a, we get a value of zero. So you can see this is modeling when the current or whatever it is, is turned off. And then as soon as we hit this t equal to a, this t value of a, then we flip the switch and basically the value becomes one and is one forevermore until we decide to turn it off again. Okay, so it's just a piecewise function. Now you can have more than two pieces. You may have different states or whatever in your model that you're trying to use, but just the most basic version of the unit step function here is we have an off value and an on value. It's possible we may have some others as well. Here I've done just real quick two basic examples of the unit step function. So u of t minus 2, here what we're saying according to the definition we just wrote down here, a is equal to 2, because remember this is u of t minus a, so a is positive 2 here. So that means when t is equal to 2, at this point that means the switch is flipped and then we go from a u value or a dependent variable value of zero up to a value of one. Over here, u of t minus five, so a is just equal to five in this case, meaning that at t equal to five, or maybe at t equals five seconds or something like that, then the switch is flipped and we go from the off value to the on value from zero to one. We can also use the unit step function to turn off part of any function we like. So here I just used a basic example of the square root function. So we have f of t equals square root t. And what you can do is take the unit step function here. So I've just chosen, for example, this unit step function with a equal to 4. And if you multiply any function by the unit step function, and so think about what's going on here. If a is equal to 4, remember this value is going to be 0 when t is between 0 and 4. Okay, so you can see what we've got here all the way up from, from the origin out to t equal 4. We basically have the value of 0. And then the unit step function is going to have a value of 1 once we hit time is 4 seconds and greater than 4 seconds. So as soon as we hit t equal to 4, we're going to jump up to the square root graph and have the original square root graph from then on. Okay, you can think about if you multiply that square root of t by the number one, certainly you get back the original function that we started with. So you kind of have that off on switch that you can create using unit step function, multiplying it by any function you like. We can also take a function and just have a time delay on it. So I've graphed some function here, f of t, I just have some nice curve here that starts at zero and we go along to about six seconds there. And if you think about, instead of just multiplying f of t by the unit step function, we we'll just turn it off for a period of time. What we can do is first do a horizontal shift of the function. So here I have f of t minus two. So this idea here is actually a horizontal shift of two units to the right. So we've taken this original graph here of f of t and we're going to shift that graph over two units which basically will give us so instead of starting at t equals zero we'll start at t equals two and we'll have the same value so we'll have a copy there that's just two units to the right. But then what we want to do, think about before this value of t equals zero in the original function, it's possible we could have had some values over to the left of the vertical axis that would then 
transport themselves into our positive domain of time, and you know we might have some sort of a tail that appears in this area of the graphs. So the idea is if we want to shut off those values, we just simply take our unit step function and make sure we apply the same shift there. So if we have t minus 2 in the function, we have t minus 2 in the unit function. Basically that before time value of 2 is going to turn everything off. So we get no value there. Uh, that will do things like create perhaps a similar uh, definite integral. If we're looking to find the area under a curve from something to something else, uh, as long as we turn off the function before that shift, then that's not going to change what we might get for an, an integral expression. Okay, so these are some ideas. Unit step function, how we write it, what it is, turning it off, turning it on, how we can turn other functions off or on, or also create a time delay with a function using the unit step.